If photography is writing with light, then teaching ourselves to find, recognize, create, or utilize light and shadow is really the greatest skill we can teach ourselves. If we get this one right, we will be able to take evocative images no matter what camera we have in hand. One of the questions I get asked most often is how do you recognize good light? It's a great question, maybe the question, but a very hard one to answer. So I'm making this series to let you in on my thinking around how I compose and expose an image, hoping it will inspire you to see the quality of light and shadow in your own daily wanderings and get you thinking about how to write with it. I'm in Sweden at the moment, uh, filming a job for a client, but I thought I'd stop and try and make a video quickly, just uh, as part of this good light series. And I've just seen a shot that really might work. I'm gonna have to do it really fast because it is, and I'm not kidding, minus 25 degrees Celsius at the moment. And growing up in Africa has not prepared me for this. So what I'm thinking is there's a beautiful little red barn in front of me, nice wooden barn, and they're all over this area. And uh, it's in a beautiful sort of plain snow field. There's no tracks in the snow, so it's a beautiful clean canvas. There are some telephone wires coming into the shot, which is a little bit annoying, but instead of uh, being frustrated about the fact that they're there, I'm gonna try and use them as a leading line in the shot and an extra little interesting piece of composition. One of the amazing things about the light in this kind of part of the world, and this will be totally different from the last video I did, when you get to these kind of latitudes in winter, the sun cuts through the atmosphere at such an oblique angle, it has to travel through a lot more atmosphere before it hits the earth, and that breaks the light up and makes it really, really soft. And today there's even a little bit of cloud cover as well that the sun's cutting through, so you get this incredibly soft light. Sometimes you want the light to be hard and harsh, and you want the shadows to be harsh and to create shapes, and you'll work off that, and that'll be the feature but sometimes you want something in your frame to be the feature and you don't want the light to distract. I think if I was going to take the shot I'm about to take now and it was hard sunlight with hard shadows from the trees and the building, it might distract. But because the light is so soft at the moment, there's no hard shadows at all, it's being totally broken up as it comes through. You've got these beautiful soft palettes of, of tones and, and light and there's no hard shadows and the colors almost go kind of a pastel-y color. The, the, the building and the trees really pop off the frame. So if you want to accentuate a subject in your frame in a field like this or, or in a location that's kind of a bigger landscape, soft light can really, really be your friend. And that's what I'm working off today. So I'm gonna just take a few shots and pick the best ones later and uh, just move around the area and take some different shots and see what I can get. That was getting way too cold so I've come back in the car with the heater on and just to tell you because I know some of you were interested in terms of camera I used the uh, Fuji X-T20 with the 23mm f2 which is pretty much my favorite run and gun lens it's always on the camera I have to switch to something else but when I'm traveling I find this is such a versatile focal length 23mm on an APS-C sensor is obviously a 35 ish at f2 and you can do so much with that focal length uh, settings I was on f2 at one over one thousandth of a second and ISO 200 just to keep the um, keep the noise down and out of the image so that's kind of what I was using and how I was uh, shooting it So with these images, you can see, I'm just gonna give you from left to right the images that I took. I started out and I wanted this kind of plain white in front, the snow, I didn't want these track lines in. I thought I might just be able to clone that out with a quick swipe and just keep a very clean look. And I framed a bit more sky, tried to frame a bit further down. And then I tried some uh, portrait versions, which I quite liked. Remember I said I was using these leading lines, the telephone poles, and moved across, tweaked around that on for a little bit. 
I came back to wide and just bumped the exposure a bit and maybe included a bit more of these lines, pull this bit more into the third, tried it a bit further over. You can see these are just like sort of moving towards something. This shed was in the background, which I thought was really cool. And I was trying to work out if there was a way to include both that would work, but you kind of lose this leading line here. But I do like the kind of juxtaposition of these two. That could have been a viable option. I like this. So sort of taking out most of these telephone wires, you can still see them a little bit, but it's very easy to clone out or you could leave them. They're not very distracting as it is. So, um, and then you've got uh, your two huts, which are kind of um, juxtaposing each other. This was kind of my second favorite and I almost went with this one. It is quite a nice image. And then I tried to include the tracks just to see what it would do and also pull them closer together by stepping around a little bit. Wasn't quite sure about that. So then I went back to landscape and then I, I thought, well, what if I use this track? So I've got this leading line with the, with the telephone wires, but I've also got this, this sort of line that leads in with these tracks here as well. I thought instead of trying to avoid them all together and get this clear snow field, which you heard me say in the video, I thought, what if I include them? So I kind of moved across and this image here is the one that I've kind of decided, I think that's probably the best one to try and edit. So if I hit uh, Y on my keyboard now, I can see a before and after. You can see we've changed it quite a lot. Actually, if I hit Shift and Y, you can see a side by side. So basically I've got from something which was quite blue and quite cool, but I've maintained all the, the detail that I wanted. So I've got the edit and now I've got something which looks quite nice, a very clean kind of snow field, this nice leading line, leading lines of the pylons and this red of the barn really pops. And I quite like that image as it is. Thank you. 